All right, Coach, you want to start with the opening statement? Yeah, um, welcome everybody. Uh, good college football game uh, on Saturday, and credit to South Alabama. Uh, played a wonderful game uh, and uh, made more plays down the stretch in watching the film uh, than we did. Um, the one thing I am appreciative of is our kids. Um, I walked into that locker room after the game, and it's what losing is supposed to sound like. There was not one whisper anywhere. Uh, there was a team that really felt like um, – they had put themselves in position to win uh, a football game against a really good team, a team that's at, at near the top of the West Division, one of the better teams in our conference, uh, and we didn't make the plays down the stretch to get it done. Um, I really appreciated their focus yesterday. I thought that themselves and the staff have their jaw set to go do something special this week. We've been on some national stages before, whether it's a Power Five, uh, a Power Five win, whether it's a Top 25 win. Now we get a Thursday night on national TV to be able to show our product, uh, and we've got our jaw set ready to go compete again uh, and compete and execute at a higher level. We've had eight games that have been one score in the fourth quarter. Uh, we know this conference and how competitive it is, and it's about execution, and South Alabama out-executed us in the second half. With that, I'll take any uh, questions that you got. I know you've got to have some concerns, particularly with ha what happened in the second half. Mm -hmm. Let's start with on the defensive side mm -hmm. where their running game just mm -hmm. didn't seem like you guys were able to stop them. Mm -hmm. They had that one drive, seven straight rushing plays mm -hmm. that all went for positive yards, ends up in a score. The concerns about your rush defense right now? Well, uh, two things. Two things that le lead to that. If you look at the first half, okay, you look at the first half, because sometimes you just look at the stats and it, it tells one story. But then you go back and watch the film and you look at the total aspect of a game, and that's what you have to do as a head coach. Two sides, and we play team football around here. In the first half, you look at our third down efficiency compared to our second half third down efficiency offensively. You know, you look up and you go two of five on third and short. We made the two first third and shorts. We said, hey, we had to stay on pace. This is a good we, This is a good defense. You have to stay on pace. You got to get yourself in third and short situations. We did that, all right, and the first two we make, and you look up and we're up 21 to seven. You look at the second half, we're 0 of three, 0 of three in the second half. And all of a sudden you look up and they've got 83 plays compared to our 63 plays. So our drive efficiency, we were four of 12 offensively. We're one of the best third down efficiency units, not the best in our conference, one of the best in the nation at it. And we gave the ball back to a good offense and put higher play count on our defense. The next thing that happened defensively, if you look at us in the, in the first half, I thought the first half they were doing a, a really good job of being extremely efficient, both assignment wise both execution wise and getting the ball down that created third and long situations they had to pass we get four sacks that did not happen in the second half there was a couple reasons why it could have been misalignment it could have it, it was misalignment it was get it falling out of a gap and it was missed tackle and because those plays kept going all of a sudden it's third and one third and two third and three they're getting third and shorts and drives keep it going so the execution piece, uh, we've, they proved in the first house they can get it done. It's the consistency of getting it done and then playing better team football offensively and making our third down and keeping, making our third downs, keeping drives alive and flip the script like we have. We've always been the higher play count total number. This time around, we let the other team get that. Are you thinking that because your offense was not on the field much in the second half, that contributed to oh no question uh, yeah you you put your defense out there several times in the second half that's that's going to hurt your defense too now does it is, is do you use that as an excuse to say oh no should we made the tackle yes should we be gap, gap of sound yes assignment sound yes definitely you know and our kids know that and our coaches know that but it, there is when we win football games we play great team football in all three phases and I and we can do a better job of doing that especially offensively uh, where we've been extremely good on third down efficiency we didn't get that done in the second half of, of Saturday's game 
So that was the second part I was going to, the mm -hmm. offense, the concerns on that. You score only seven points, had a great drive to open up the third. Mm -hmm. And from then on, you never even got in field goal range from mm -hmm. there on offense. Well, uh, you know, you look at it, and we did have I, – I felt one of the big keys in the game, and you had brought it up the other night, Josh, and I'll, I'll address it, is, you know, we've taken a lot of pride in our red zone offense. If you look at us statistically, we're one of the best in the country at it. And we get our special teams come through for us and get us a big turnover uh, in our punt coverage on the 15 yard line and it's really an opportunity to truly separate uh, and we didn't get that done you know so we missed some opportunities in the second half three third and shorts that we don't convert we don't convert a, a red zone turnover that has the opportunity to kind of end the game uh, and, and truly separate yourself and we didn't get that done and we understand that we take a lot of pride offensively uh, in doing our job I'm an offensive coach by trade so uh, I'm a little bit harder probably there uh, than most people uh, but uh, I truly believe we do our job on those third and shorts and we execute in the red zone um, there may be too much separation to overcome the third and short issues what do you attribute those to uh, two of them were missed assignments and one was a physical beat I want to ask about the health report first off. Jeremy Singleton, is there any update on that? Yeah, he has a uh, lower ankle sprain that's day to day. Uh, he did not practice yesterday. Uh, we'll see how what he can do today, uh, but it is day to day. You think with the short week uh, that kind of decreases the chances that he'll play? He's a really tough kid. Uh, walked off the field. Uh, there was no swelling after the game. Wasn't any swelling the next day. Did have soreness. Uh, we were very preventative yesterday. Um, and we're going to kind of, he wants to kind of see it today and see where it's at. Uh, we'll look at it. And uh, I think it's going to be day to day. Uh, we'll probably bring him to this game and probably will be all the way up to game time decision. You talked about the team's reaction to the loss at home. Was yeah. that different? from any of the other losses in terms of reaction? You know, you, you, the one thing I love about these kids, one is their resiliency. They bounce back so fast. Um, and, they, and they came back to work yesterday. But when I walked in the locker room, you couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear a whisper. Uh, and I, and I, I told them, I said, man, I commend you, because that's what losing is supposed to sound like. It's supposed to hurt. You're supposed to be mad. Uh, and I could see your eyes, and I could see exactly where you're at right now. As you know that we had an opportunity to win at home, which we take a lot of pride in, and we did not get that done today as a team. Not one person, not one side of the ball. As a team, we didn't get that done. And I, and I told him I expect you to come in here tomorrow with your jaw set and, and get ready to go play a good Louisiana team and fight like hell to go get bowl eligible. Um, and they, they entered the building yesterday just like I thought they would. They're a resilient bunch. They're a prideful bunch. And it hurts them to not get the job done. Hurts our staff not to get the job done. So we got a mad, we got a mad uh, football office right now and ready to go play another game. The, uh, Louisiana also lost uh, a seven. They were up 17-0 mm -hmm. in the third quarter, as you know. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that situation to be even more dangerous? Are they going to be an even, even more dangerous team, a hurt team? Or I was already, you know, they already had home field a, a mm -hmm. short week. Are they going to be especially dangerous coming off of the way they lost? Well, I, the one thing I, I've seen, I've seen in uh, this conference is everybody plays at a very high level, uh, and everybody, everybody plays extremely well. Um, and you know, Troy, you look at that game last week; it's impressive. You go against Troy, uh, who's leading that Western side and doing a heck of a job. Um, you know, and all of a sudden they're seventeen nothing late in the third, uh, and lose a heartbreaker. You know, uh, I know they got a lot of pride in that program. I think it's 35 wins the last three years. They got a lot of pride too, uh, and so I would expect another war on our hands uh, come Thursday night. Coach, two questions for you. First of all, you just touched on Louisiana. What do you know so much about them and their game plan going into there? Well, uh, defensively, they're extremely opportunistic. I, I think they're number four in the country in interceptions. They do a lot of that by the zone defenses that they play, a lot of zone pressure. They can get to the quarterback with a four-man rush. And a lot of twist games, a lot of one-on-one -on -one physical beats. So they put pressure on the quarterback. They make the quarterback make poor decisions in zone coverage, and they're getting interceptions. So that's the first thing that you see is we're going to have to be protective of the football, especially uh, in the passing game. You know, the one thing 
I've been uh, really impressed by this league is the quality of the defenses. You know, we we have played the number two defense in the country. I think last week was the number 11 defense in the country. Here comes another top, top nationally ranked defense. Um, and they do a tremendous job of holding people down points wise. Um, offensively, you know, they mix personnel groupings. Um, they they are efficient in running the ball. I would imagine watching last week's game, you know, that's part of their game plan. And so as I've told our guys, we've got to be more concerned about ourselves and making sure that we're gap assignment sound, that we use our fundamentals in tackling, worry about ourselves and doing our assignments. You know, and special teams wise is probably could be the difference in the game. Um, you know, they have an all American American kick returner uh, from last year uh, that is extremely dangerous and by far the most dangerous punt returner in this league, if not one of the, in the nation. I average almost 15 yards return. He's already got two touchdowns this year. I mean, it's hard enough to pull his flag, let alone tackle him. You know, so we've got to do a tremendous job, tremendous job in our special teams units. Probably going to be the difference in the game this week. And Coach, last question for you. You know, you guys, you just spoke about the pride you guys have playing at home. You mm -hmm. know, two out of your last three games are at home. Mm -hmm. What are you and the team going to learn from that loss mm -hmm. to carry over to your next two games at home? Ask me that question next week. I'm I'm only worried about this game. All right, but but you ask me that question next week, I'll I'll definitely answer it. Coach, we talked last week that there were going to have to be a few guys that got involved in terms of receiver. You're basically down four slot guys. But mm -hmm. to see Dalen Cobb come up with a third and 15 catch for a first down, Ezra Archie made his first career catch. How nice was that to see? Yeah, you know, we, I know it's cliche, but we always talk about next man up. And I love the way we practice and develop our kids because, you know, one of the things that we, we've done throughout the season is on Sundays, you know, we get, we get what we need out of the veterans, the high play guys, and then, you know, we, they they go in strength and conditioning rehab and we actually take the extra time to work with the next guys that are right on the brink of playing for us and because of that all of a sudden you look up in the later half of the season and you're putting guys out there that are ready to go play and you think about the college rule that came into play about three or four years ago about the four games anytime man it's created great opportunities for young people to get college experience keep a team a little bit more healthier and you look at Dalen Cobb man what a big third down catch that that kid had. You look at Marcus Sanders and now what, what he's doing. Deshaun Davis, holy mackerel, you know, what, what he's been able to do. So it's allowing our freshmen to play at a very high level right now and really contribute. This is not a staff that has a ton of experience with short weeks. You haven't had a Thursday night game, mm -hmm. I think, in six years. Mm -hmm. How do you put that plan together? Well, hey, we came right back to work yesterday, and we were up here until the, we were watching film until the film was watching us, I think, last night. And then, you know, we went and got a couple hours of, of sleep and then got right back in here first thing this morning, got the coffee rolling and, and, and went. You know, it's this week is going to have to be because last week was a very physical football game. Um, especially, you know, when you look defensively at the number of plays. So it, it, you, we will get a lot of reps, a lot of mental reps, uh, a lot of going through our plays. The physicality may not be to a normal structure of a normal week, um, uh, you know, but we're still going to be out there today. It's going to look like a, a Tuesday practice uh, on Monday uh, and uh, be able to install our base our, our base first and second down game plan, uh, get to third down a red zone uh, tomorrow, uh, and then go get on a plane Wednesday. You know, so everything's just sped up, and there are some short nights. All right, thank you, Coach. Yes, thank you, guys. Hail Southern. I got to start first with uh, oh, yeah. defensive lineman Dylan Springer. He is a Louisiana native right. going back home. Yeah, good. Play, and then we'll follow it up with punter Anthony Beck in the second. Questions for Dylan? Hello, hello. All right. Well, Dylan, I know Coach uh, just kind of talked a little bit about some of the issues that you guys had with uh, stopping the run particularly. How are you feeling about that and where do you feel like uh, you guys have to – what do you feel like you have to shore up in order to, to do that? Because I imagine teams are going to try to take advantage of, of, of you yes, guys. Yes, sir. Um, hats off to South Alabama. Um, good football team. Can I hear and play a good football game? And um, <clears throat> had it. Tremendous running back, man. He was great. But um, as a defense, you know, we want to get better. We want to get better at stopping running. We want, we want to get better at, you know, showing up for our team. And, um, and, you know, as we come back to practice and get ready for ULL, 
we're going to take every step that we need to take to, to get better in that area so that the outcome next time be a W. What, where do you feel like it, it is? Where, where what is it? The problems were, yeah. Um, definitely, we, we, as a unit, we, we have to do better tackling inside the box and getting guys down. And like I said, we're going to take step, every step we need to, to get better at that. So that way the outcome could be, to be a win. You've been around the league a while. Do you, do you feel like this year's defensive line, how do they match up with the offensive lines that you're facing? You're facing a lot of bigger lines. Are you kind of having an uphill battle? Or you guys have a lot of experience with you and Justin, but you have some young guys mm -hmm. in the middle. Is it, do you have like a different mix than you've had before? And are you finding that you're going up against a, a bunch of sixth year and seventh year guys? It feels like. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a lot of, you know, in Italy, it's definitely a lot of older guys that, that we're going up against. And, um, you know, we do have some, some younger guys, some, uh, you know, me and Justin, we, we're more of the experienced guys in the group. And, uh, you know, um, we, we try to do our best to lead those guys and let them know, hey, when you see this, this play is coming, um, you know, getting watching film and getting tendencies of the O-line and things like that. And um, like I said, in this league, it, it is a lot of experienced O-linemen that we go against. So, you know, we got to do a good job of watching film and, and putting it on and putting it on tape and practice and going out and executing on Saturdays. So, <laughs> ball head guys, all type of stuff. <laughs> Quick turnaround for you guys. You know, how do you guys mentally prepare for the Thursday night game? Oh, um, man, yeah, definitely a quick turnaround. Um, like I said, respect to South Alabama, um, you know, um, leave a bad taste in your mouth. And uh, right now, our focus is to do what we have to do to go out Thursday night and get that taste out of our mouth and keep this thing rolling. It's, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be fun to go out there, um, you know, compete for a win and become bowl eligible. We talked to media, Dave, about how much pride you have in your hometown. Yeah. Being able to go back to Cajun country. How much family do you have coming, and what's this going to be like for you? Oh, man, it's going to be fun. Last time we were down there um, for the media day, uh, we, 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 we uh, went down there on a private jet. Shout out to Lenny B, man. That was fun. Great experience. We had, we had fun out there. And uh, like I said, as soon as I got off the jet, I was like, smells just like home. And uh, it's going to be the same thing when we go out there this time. This time it's going to be – uh, it's going to be about going out there and taking care of business. And it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun, you know, especially for me. You know, it's my last year. Um, I get to do it in the hometown. And like I said, go out there and compete for, for a win and to get bowl eligible and bring that, bring that home, back, bring that W back, back to Statesboro. This being your sixth year and considering the position that you play where you're hitting somebody just about every snap, how much differently do you have to maintain your body throughout the week to be able to perform at peak on Saturdays or Thursdays or whatever day it is? Right, man, it's critical. It's critical. I, um, I went to treatment this morning. I'm going to treatment right after this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you, you have to hound the training room. You have to hound the ice baths, everything, before practice, after practice, in the mornings. Every chance you get, you have to stretch. Everything, you, everything that you possibly can do to be, be your best on game day. So it's critical, man. I guess by now you've gotten to see a bunch of film on um, Louisiana, mm -hmm. and you don't see Levi Lewis anymore. Tell me about what that feels like not to see him anymore, and also what the quarterback and the offense at Louisiana, what they have for you guys this Thursday. I tell you what, it's a great feeling not to, not to see uh, Levi Lewis. That dude was a dog, man. But uh, uh, you're a great football team, you know. Um, they always somehow have a great, great, a good offensive line, and, and uh, you know, they have two, two great running backs. And, you know, um, like I said, for us, you know, we're just going we – we focus on what, what we have to do to go out there and take care of business. But great team, man. Um, like I said, they're running backs, work, workloads, um, good scheme up front, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to executing for us and, you know, filling in the gaps and making the tackles and making the plays that we need to make to come out with a W. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Appreciate y'all. How we doing? Anthony, uh, coach was talking about how the team reacted to the loss in the locker room after the game. What did you see in there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he said it perfectly. It's, um, it's definitely a bad taste in our mouth. Uh, being up how we were and, and ended up losing, it's, it hurts even more. Uh, it's not a good feeling, but uh, I think it's going to be good for us going into this short week. So, um, ready to get to work. Uh, 
the quick turnaround going to Louisiana, your thoughts on, on, on that, um, playing on Thursday after just having played Saturday? Uh, yeah, it'll be uh, national television, so it'll be fun. Uh, it's always great uh, being able to play Louisiana. They're a great team. Uh, it's going to be a good challenge, uh, and, and it'll be on ESPN, so it's always fun. Coach mentioned how dangerous the return men are. When you're punting, are you going to get a chance to use more a different side of your punting skills when you're trying to aim or what, however you approach it differently when you've got a, a guy that maybe you're trying to keep the ball out of his hands, not just a, a fair catch? Yeah, it'll definitely be a great challenge for me. Um, I, I've played this guy plenty of times uh, in the last four years or whatever. Um, he's, he's a great athlete. I mean, he can, he's very explosive with the football when he gets it in his hands. Um, whether, whether he doesn't catch it or whether he fair catches it, that's going to be the goal. Uh, really having a good net on him um, and, and have no return. So, uh, like I said, it'll be a great challenge, and I, I'm looking forward to it. The timing of your appearance here, I, I got to ask. So you're nominated for the Ray Guy Award this year and last year, I believe. I don't know if it's been three years in a row. Two years? Uh, two or three, yeah. <laughs> well, you would know. You would know. Uh, Ray Guy passed away the other day. Uh, did you get a chance to look up stuff about him, maybe see him on YouTube, or even meet him in any previous walk of, of where you have seen him? And what do you think about him as a punter? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I've done a little bit of research on him uh, ever since I began being a full-time punter. Uh, I would say uh, I know um, a great guy. I knew Doc Spurgeon. Uh, he he was able to know him very well uh, and whatnot through his years. So hearing stories from Doc uh, about him and, and just knowing the history of him and how great of a punter he was, and obviously he has the award named after him. So uh, I know not not only myself, but a lot of punters look up to what he was able to do uh, and try and try to be even better. So uh, yeah, it was. It was a great research in him and, and getting to know how, how he went about things and how he did in his uh, career. Do you have a number one on your list? Uh, that's the goal. But, but you, do, you, do you rank Ray Guy as number one all time? Uh, I think I, I don't try to rank other punters, um, but I, he's, I mean, he's definitely up there. He's, he's one of the all-time greats, uh, and, there, and there's a plenty of uh, good ones out there. So. A lot of people in this league would consider you and Reese Burns the league's two best punters. You get a chance to do it one more time on Thursday. Do you look at that as a personal challenge to go against him? Uh, personal challenge. I think we, we've been here uh, for a few years going at it now. Um, so we were able to build a relationship. We, we text back and forth every now and then, especially the week of the game. So I'll probably send him a text here shortly. Um, yeah, I do think it's a personal challenge. Um, we're always usually one and two or, uh, or however it may be. So. Uh, I, I, try to, I try to go after him every year. Uh, it's a great challenge. He's a great punter. Uh, he, he does things very, very well uh, and efficiently. So uh, personal challenge, I would say, yeah. He, and he's a great guy. I, I like competing against him, and it's fun because we like to like make jokes and whatnot. You talked about their returner, Eric Gare, and I remember here a couple of years ago, he muffed two of your punts. Georgia Southern recovers both of them. They led to scores. I know his numbers this year. He's run a couple of back. But for you, can you actually manipulate the ball so it can be tough to catch, or do you have to leave it up to the atmosphere? Yeah, I'll probably tell the equipment guys put some butter on it, see see what works. Uh, maybe some syrup. I don't know. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's uh, I've played against him plenty of times, punted against him plenty of times. Um, like I said, it'll be a great challenge. Uh, maybe we'll get another muff this year, but we'll see. Sometimes you guys angle the punt snap. That's been at times over the last couple of years. How does that put a wrinkle in what you're trying to do just to get the ball off with your new steps this year as well? Yeah, so uh, different angles. Um, you can see it by uh, many teams in the nation. Um, they, it, it helps with directional, uh, whether it's to the boundary or to the field. Um, so it's just a little wrinkle that we can throw in. Uh, you can, you'll see me lined up directly behind them, right A-gap, left A-gap. Um, it helps with directional, and it can also throw off the returner. Um, but yeah, with, with my new steps and whatnot, it, I, think it's, I think it's helped. Anthony, how weird of a mindset is it to be a punter knowing that I'm only going to be called on if our offense is failing? Um, you, you know, obviously you don't want the offense to fail. You'd probably prefer to be on the sideline, but you also want to get in the game. Uh, yeah, it was actually funny. We, uh, we started off really strong, and I was sitting on the sideline. I was like, oh, well, Beck's not going to play today. Looks like I'll be holding. Uh, no, I mean, I, I want what's best for the team. Uh, that's – I mean, it's what it is. I, I would like to win games, uh, and I'd love to see the offense put up 600 yards a game uh, and me just hold the football for Rainer. So, I mean, I, I would be perfectly fine without punting every, any, in any game. Um, when I do, I, I hope to make the best of my opportunity, uh, but I like to see the offense succeed more so than me punt.
Thanks. Just a nice coincidence that you're here today because <laughs> um, um, 